everyone! Welcome to the Jada and Stitches Show, and Happy Easter! It's a special long weekend here, and like a lot of special occasions, we like to do a special project just in time for something to do over the long weekend, and today is no exception. We've got a beautiful new baby blanket pattern for you today using the crossback stitch that we used several years ago in our crossback baby booty pattern. In fact, so many of you liked that pattern that you asked for a blanket and we've designed one using the same stitch. Today's blanket is going to be made using two balls of ice cream by Lion Brand Yarns. And we'd like to thank Lion Brand for sponsoring today's video. We'll put a link to Lion Brand in the description box and the pinned comment down below so you can pop over and check out all the ice cream colors. We made this using two balls of regular ice cream, but you could also make this using one ball of ice cream Big Scoop. But don't be confused by the ice cream roving, because <laughs> that's a thicker yarn, and that might be better for a different project altogether. One of the fun things about this blanket is that we're showing it to you with the vertical stripes of color going up and down. But in fact, the blanket is really made this way. And of course, you could keep going with a ball of Big Scoop and make the blanket much bigger and use the colors vertically or horizontally. And this pattern looks really neat both ways. It looks good going left to right and it looks good going up and down. Baby blankets are a sweet part of childhood. Some of them stick with us for a long time. And while I make a baby blanket, I like to think about that. Maybe that child will use it in the crib. Maybe they'll use it in the car seat. Maybe it'll be one of those things that they just like to sit with on the floor as they watch TV as they grow. Baby blankets can grow with a child. So the exact size isn't that important because there are many ways that a baby can use a baby blanket. The important part here is to put a lot of love into this project if you're giving it to someone that you love. That said, let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table and we will stitch up a beautiful new baby blanket together. For today's baby blanket, I'm using two balls of regular Lion Brand ice cream. So this is the ice cream regular. Each of these balls is 100 grams or 394 yards. It's a size three lightweight yarn. It's 100% acrylic. I'm using two different colorways. This one is mint and this beautiful thing here is birthday cake. So I'm going to be striping my blanket. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and the hook I'm using is a five millimeter, also known as an H or an eight, but you can also use one size down, which is a four and a half or a 4.25 millimeter hook, also known as a G or a six. Either one of those hooks works well for this project. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. Please visit our shop and purchase a pattern. It helps support our show, and we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. The cross back stitch, when used in a baby blanket, can be worked over any foundation chain that is a multiple of four plus three extra chains at the end. Alternatively, you can start this project with a single crochet foundation row, and your single crochet foundation row can be any multiple of four stitches plus two extra stitches, and that will form the foundation of this blanket as well. I'm going to use the chain foundation today, so we're going to start with a slip knot. And I'm chaining 115 chains to begin. I've chained 115. If you're using the single crochet foundation row, you'll want 114 foundation single crochets. We skip the first chain from the hook and single crochet into the very next chain and single crochet into each chain across. So we'll have 114 single crochet stitches at the end of this row. This is row one. If you used the single crochet foundation technique, you'll have single crochet foundation stitched 114. So at the end of our first row, we all want 114 stitches. That's 114 stitches all the way across, and I've already got a little bit of that fun color change happening here. So every odd row is a single crochet row. You single crochet in every single stitch across. At the end of an odd row, we chain three, and the chain three at the beginning of every even row counts as a double crochet. Now because the double crochet or the chain three counts as a double crochet, that means that the first stitch 
this guy right here at the beginning of every even row is already used. The chain three counts as a double crochet, so it's using this stitch. To begin the pattern, we are skipping the next stitch, finding the third one, and double crocheting into it. So skip the first stitch, double crochet into the next three stitches. So the three stitches in a row. So it should look something like this. You've got a chain three that's sitting here. You've skipped a stitch. This little guy is completely unused. And you've double crocheted into each of the next three stitches. Now the cross back. Loosen yourself up. Take your hook, yarn over, reach back into that skipped stitch. So you're reaching back past three double crochets. Make sure you get through the whole stitch. Pick up a loop. Bring it up so that you're kind of sitting where you normally do when you regularly double crochet. And then double crochet as normal. So make sure you get under those first two loops and then yarn over and through the second. And even if it feels a little bunched up at first, as you go along, it will pull itself into position. And you've got a cross there. And if you look at the other side, you have a nice tidy cross on the back. That is the cross back stitch. Skip the first stitch, double crochet into the next three, and then double crochet into that skipped stitch. Here we go. Skip the next stitch. Find the next one, double crochet into it, and double crochet into the two stitches after that. So skip one, double crochet into each of the next three stitches. Nice and loose, easy going. There's our skipped stitch, double crochet into the next three, and now double crochet into that first skip stitch. So reach back, make sure you get the whole thing, pick up a loop, and double crochet as you normally would. And there you go. There's our first two cross back motifs done. We'll do one more together. Make sure that you're skipping the next stitch. So you see how this stitch is used? Don't confuse it with a non-used stitch. Look for the next one. It's absolutely not used. Skip it. Double crochet into the next three. There's a definite skip stitch there. There's our three double crochets. And yarn over, reach back. Make sure you get the whole stitch. There you go. And pick up a loop. Double crochet as normal. There you go. And there are three cross back motifs completed. And you see how it looks a little bit tight when we first make it, but then as we start to crochet again, it kind of pulls it out and they will all start looking nice and even. That's that side, and that's the pretty side. I like this side the best, in my opinion. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna let you work the rest of this row. You always skip the next stitch, double crochet into the three following that, yarn over, reach back, double crochet into that skipped stitch, and that is your motif, and you repeat that all the way across. You'll have 28 cross back motifs or little hay bales. They kind of look like little hay bales to me at the end and I'll catch up with you there. At the end of your second row, the first row of the cross pack stitch, you will have 28 motifs. You'll still have 114 stitches, but it's just easier to count the motifs, and you'll have 24 of them. You should have one stitch left when you finished your last cross back motif. You're just gonna double crochet into that. Every even row, or the cross back stitch row, begins with a chain three and ends with a double crochet. So you have a little post, a double crochet post on either end. Remember the chain three counts as a double crochet. And there you go. Now, 
We're back to an even row, or I should say an odd row, and the odd row is just single crochet. We chain one and turn. The chain one does not count as anything, it's just a turning chain, so you are going to single crochet directly into that first stitch, or the top of that double crochet. So chain one, turn, double crochet, or I should say single crochet, you're single crocheting in every single stitch across. You'll have 114 stitches at the end of row three. Every odd row is a single crochet row. Every odd row has 114 single crochet stitches in it. So you're just grabbing every single stitch all the way across. And that is going to highlight that really pretty cross back stitch. I'll catch up with you at the end of row three. Once you've single crocheted in every single stitch all the way across, and it's really highlighting that pretty little cross back stitch now, when you get to the top of the chain three, remember we're treating that chain three as a double crochet, so you're going to find the top of it and single crochet into the top of the chain three. And that completes your odd row, you'll have 114 stitches, and then you're back to the even row again, which is the cross back stitch. We chain three to begin, that chain three counts as a double crochet, and because that counts as a double crochet, this first stitch right here is already used. So we skip the first stitch, so this is our post, it uses this stitch, skip a stitch, double crochet into the next three stitches. So there's your three double crochet. Now you yarn over, reach back, find that skipped stitch, make sure you're getting the whole thing, and double crochet. And that completes one cross back motif. And there you go. Skip a stitch, make sure, see how this looks like the stitch, but it's not. You can see that there's a stitch worked into it. Pull up if you have to. This is the stitch we're skipping. So skip one and double crochet into the next three. If you find when you get to the end of an even row that you're a stitch over, a stitch under, then it's very likely that you've not skipped the first stitch or you thought you skipped an unused stitch but did in fact forget to skip the stitch or you missed it because, uh, you know, this can happen with our tension. Sometimes we have some stitches that are wider than others. Um, so it's not a great big deal, but just try to be careful. You will get comfortable with it. It'll start to look a little more um, easy to recognize as you travel through this pattern. But at first, you might need to just pay a little extra attention to the stitches um, when you go to skip one. Again, this one's being used. There's the stitch worked into it. This is the stitch I'm skipping. Here's the next one. So it's the cross back stitch worked every even row. We end this row with a double crochet in the last stitch, and then you chain one, turn, and single crochet in every single stitch all the way back. So odd rows are single crochet, even rows are the cross back stitch. And I'm going to let you work away at that for a few, few rows, and then I'm going to show you how to change colors. completed 10 rows of the pattern stitch now and I'm going to change colors. In fact, I'm going to change colors every 10 rows. And it's really easy to count. You just find a motif row and go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So at the end of every 10th row, which will be an even row, I'm going to snip my yarn fasten off and I'm going to take a moment to weave that tail in just underneath some of those stitches or maybe just across sort of the backs of the top of that last row. And then I'm going to grab my second color and I'm going to join to start the next row. Once you're ready to add your new color, you're going to start with a slip knot on your hook. And since the odd rows are always single crochet, you can also opt to just single crochet over top of your short tails rather than taking the time to weave them in. This is just as good, and I like to do it because it's faster. <laughs> We're going to join our yarn with a single crochet 
in that first stitch. So instead of slip stitching, we're just going to single crochet to join the yarn. Then I'm going to work over top of my short tails. Single crochet as usual in every single stitch all the way across. You'll still have 114 stitches and you can just continue with the pattern. I will be changing rows every or I should say changing colors every 10 rows. If you don't want to change colors, you don't have to. You can just continue to repeat the pattern in the color that you've chosen. You can also decide to change colors every fewer number of rows or every 12 or 14, every 20 rows. It doesn't matter. I just recommend making sure that you always finish on an even row and start the next color on an odd row. If you find that you've got a little bit of a bump at the end of your row where you joined your yarn, I find it's helpful to grab that first stitch, grab the tail that you're working over top of, pull that tail, and that will flatten up that side. Also, we're going to be adding a little border, so any little uneven edges will disappear, and it's always recommended that you block your blankets when you're finished, especially if you're giving them away as a gift, and we'll talk a little bit more about blocking later. I've now completed 10 rows with the birthday cake color. So I've got 10 rows in, in mint, 10 rows in birthday cake, and I just wanted to show you how absolutely gorgeous this is looking. So that's 20 rows in total. I'm going to do 60 rows all together. So 60 rows in the pattern stitch, and that, that'll be 30 rows of just straight single crochet, the odd rows, and 30 rows of the cross back stitch, which is the even rows. And every 10 rows, I will be changing colors. So I've just completed 10 rows with birthday cake. I'm going to fasten off and join my mint back and switch back to mint for the next 10 rows. I'll let you work away at the blanket, whether you want to change colors or not, and I will see you at the end of row 60. I have now completed 60 rows of the pattern stitch. I changed color every 10 rows, so I have three even stripes of each color, mint and birthday cake. I fastened off my last stitch, and now we're going to add a little base single crochet row to three sides of the blanket. So we began with a single crochet row across the bottom, and we're going to actually start with a single crochet in the bottom corner, single crochet up the one side, across the top and back down the other side, but not across the bottom. So all we're gonna do is switch back to our other color, or if you're not changing colors at all, make sure you fasten off because we wanna start in the bottom corner. If you flip your blanket upside down and you find that little tail that's left behind from the start, you're going to turn your blanket over so that your little tail is over here and we are going to join our yarn on the opposite side. So this would be the front facing single crochets and we're going to join our, our yarn with a single crochet in the same place that that first single crochet is. So there's the chain here and that's the single crochet. We're going to join our yarn right there. So we're going to grab our turquoise yarn or whatever yarn you're using Start with a slip knot, and then it helps sometimes to sort of just see the way it looks across the bottom. This is the little space right here that we're going to join our yarn in, sort of the edge of that single crochet stitch. We're going to join with a single crochet, and we're going to single crochet up the edge. This is the raw first raw side of the blanket. Really simple, every double crochet or chain three um, you come to, you're going to work two single crochet through it and a one single crochet in the edge of the single crochet row. So two per even row edge, one per odd row edge. And I like to sort of slip my hook right through the yarn. I'm not working around the stitch, I'm working through it. This just creates a nice, um, even, not messy single crochet edging. And knowing that you only work two per even edge and one per single crochet edge, it won't stretch out the shape of your blanket. Um, plus it's, it's a little easier to look at, so it doesn't have to be exactly the same place that you put your hook through every single time. But what you're going for is an even 
placement. Two single crochet per even row edge, one single crochet per odd row edge. So if you look at it that way, you'll have two per even row, one per odd. And nice and simple. Just take your time. Remember to work through the stitch or the, th the chains. You want to try and get at least a couple loops on the top of your hook while you're single crocheting. And then I'll meet you up at the top. Across 60 rows of the pattern stitch, you'll have 90 single crochet running up the edge. Your last single crochet will be in the same, sort of the top of the same stitch um, that you finished with. And in the same place, you're going to chain one and single crochet. So chain one, single crochet, or I should say single crochet, chain one, single crochet in the same place. And that's basically the top of that stitch, the last stitch across the row. And now you're just going to single crochet in each stitch all the way across the top of the last row of the pattern stitch. I'm going to work over top of that little short tail. So pretty simple, just like a regular row of single crochet, and I'll catch up with you at the other side. That's a single crochet in each stitch across the last row of the pattern and the last don't forget that chain three we're going to single crochet chain one and single crochet into the same place and that single crochet becomes the first single crochet down the second raw edge and it's exactly the same as the other side you're going to work two single crochets into the edge of each even row and one single crochet into the edge of each odd row. Remember that you are placing your hook right through the stitch. I like to try and get two loops over top of my hook, right through the stitch, not around it, and that is what gives us that nice, neat, tidy edging. So same thing as the other side, all the way down. Once you've single crocheted all the way down the edge of that second side, finish with two single crochet in the edge of row two. And remember, we don't have to work into the edge of row one. We're using that as sort of the, the part of the foundation border. We're just going to chain one and slip stitch into the first chain we made. Your little tail will probably be hanging off of that still. And that is the foundation border row complete. So basically we have single crochet running around the entire edge of the blanket. Here we go. We are going to turn our work. So every row we're going to turn our work for the border. We're going to slip stitch into that chain one space we just made. And we're going to start from here. We're going to chain five. The first three chains counts as a double crochet. The next two chains counts as a chain two corner space. Into the same place we're going to double crochet. So every little chain one corner, and don't miss them, they're small, you're going to work double crochet, chain two, double crochet into the little chain one space. And then you're going to double crochet in every single stitch. So you've got single crochets running all the way around the blanket. You're going to single crochet or you're going to double crochet in every single one of those stitches. You're going to work double crochet, chain two, double crochet in every chain one space. And you're also going to double crochet across the foundation row, but I will show you what that looks like when we get back there. So remember, double crochet in every single stitch, double crochet, chain two, double crochet in every chain one corner. They are small, so don't miss them. Remember to work double crochet, chain two, double crochet into each of the chain one spaces. You're double crocheting in every single stitch all the way around. When you get back down to the bottom of the blanket, you are going to work your final double crochet into the last single crochet stitch. And then to make a nice little transition, in that same little place where we joined our yarn to start that border stitch, so that single crochet, you're going to work your corner double crochet, chain two, double crochet right into that little space. And that'll just fill in that space nicely. 
Then you can double crochet in each foundation chain row all the way back across. So now you're just working into those foundation chain rows, or I should say the foundation chains across that row, and there's your nice neat and tidy corner. So double crochet into the last single crochet stitch from the border. That was the first single crochet stitch we started for the foundation border row. And into the same place where you joined that yarn, work double crochet, chain two, double crochet, and then continue with a double crochet in every single foundation chain all the way across. And we'll be finished the second row of our border. Once you've double crocheted in every foundation chain, you're back at the beginning. You're going to find the third chain, so you can either count one, two, and use the third, or one, two from the bottom. You're going to join with a slip stitch to that third chain, and there is your nice and tidy little chain two corner. You can snip your yarn and switch back to your other color now. If you're not changing colors, you're just going to turn your work and slip stitch into your chain two space. So I'm going to be working over that tail or I'll work it in later. So we turn our work now. I'm going to grab my other color now, make a slip knot for my hook. We're going to join with a slip stitch in the chain two space. We're going to be using single crochets and single crochet spike stitches now for this row. And you're going to identify sets of four double crochet stitches at a time and we're going to work through sets of four. So this isn't a complicated stitch but it does help to keep track of sets of four. I'm going to work over top of my short tails and here we go. The first thing you do is identify a set of four, find the two middle stitches, find the space in between and put your hook in the space between those two middle stitches. Pull up a loop nice and gently, not tight, we're making a spike stitch into that space. This single crochet spike stitch counts as the stitch on top of the first double crochet. You might need to move the spike a little to show the middle two stitches. You're going to single crochet normally into the top of the middle two stitches, and then instead of single crocheting into the top of the fourth stitch, you're going to spike stitch back into the same space between the two middle stitches, Pull up a loop, nice and gentle, and that single crochet spike stitch counts as the stitch on top of the fourth double crochet. So one, two, three, four, and you get a really cute little spike inverted V stitch. Let's do that again. The next four stitches are easy to find. If you pick up your hook, you'll see that your stitch floats. That's the stitch it's floating over top of, so this is the first of four double crochet. Find the two middle ones, find the space in between, insert your hook, pull up a nice gentle loop, single crochet. You might have to move the spike stitch in order to see the tops of the middle two stitches, so pull it back if you have to. Single crochet normally in the middle two stitches, and then spike stitch back into the same place, for the fourth stitch in the set. So you see that? You've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and an inverted spike stitch. That stitch floats. You can see that it's floating over top of this one because this one is anchored. You can see that there. This is the floating stitch, which means this is the first of the next four. Find the middle two, find the space in between. Spike stitch. Move the spike, single crochet normally into the top of the middle two stitches, and then spike stitch to finish off the set. In this way, we are mimicking the cross back look of the cross back stitch, but we're making kind of a tidy little V stitch on top of those double crochets. Let's do one more together. This spike stitch floats above the last stitch of the set, which means this is the next one. Here's the set of four, there's the middle two, there's the space in between. Just pull up on my yarn a little bit, I don't want too loose a stitch. 
There we go. Move the spike single crochet as normally into the middle two stitches. And then spike stitch to finish off the set. And there we go. You should have even sets of four double crochet all the way across each side. And that's why this little inverted spike stitch V stitch is going to work. So go ahead, finish off this first side and I'll catch up with you at the corner. We have our inverted spike stitch v-stitch now running all the way across the edge. So it's worked across every four stitches, so just to keep in mind four sets. And your last inverted spike stitch v will be across the last four double crochet. When you get to a chain two quarter, we're just going to single crochet three times into it. This is just turning the edge nice and tidy, nothing fancy. That's all we're doing inside that corner. And then it's the same thing. Identify your next four sets of double crochet, find the middle, V-stitch or spike stitch, start the spike stitch, pull it back so you can see the top of the middle two stitches, and then spike stitch into the same place to finish off the V, our little inverted V-stitch. That one always floats above the last stitch in the set, so you know that the next four start after that. One, two, three, four. Find the middle, start the V-stitch with a spike stitch, pull it back so that you can see the middle two stitches, single crochet normally, and then single crochet spike stitch into the same place to finish off the set. When you get to the next corner, single crochet three times into that chain two space, and keep going. And I'll see you back at the beginning. Once you've worked that little inverted spike stitch v-stitch all the way around, work your last three single crochet into the chain two space where we started. Skip over that slip stitch, find the first single crochet, which will be a spike single crochet, and join with a slip stitch to that. And that is it. Now, if you wanted and you had enough yarn left over, you could just work another little row of single crochet if you wanted. But I really love this delicate little edging that just kind of mimics that cross back stitch that we see all the way through. All right, you can snip your yarn, fasten off, take a moment to weave in all of your tails. And this is a good time in a blanket project to really go through it, look all the way around your blanket, all around your corners, check each edge of your stripe to make sure that you don't have any little tails sort of dangling loose. Weave them all in, take a moment to do that. And then if you're giving this as a gift, I highly recommend that you give it a light wash and blocking it to dry, just so it looks its absolute best. Or if you're not giving it away as a gift, um, you can still block it. It's nice to have a straight edged little uh, blankie, even though uh, you don't have to continue to block things once you've done it. So if you wash them down in the future, you do typically don't have to continue to block a blanket. But most blankets like this are loved by the kids that get them, and they don't care <laughs> if the edges are 100% straight or not. One of my favorite things about this blanket is that really neat little inverted spike stitch v-stitch pattern around the border. It's those little tiny finishing details that just makes an entire blanket project sweet, like ice cream. <laughs> and thanks again to Lion Brand for sponsoring today's video. I really do love ice cream yarn. It's one of my favorite things to make a baby blanket out of. We hope you enjoyed today's project as much as I did, and we will see you soon here on the Jada and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a wonderful long weekend, everyone. Bye. Hi, everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.